Were you out running the weekend over the weekend? Uh, I was here during the weekend. No, running. Uh, no, I didn't get a chance to run. <laughs> are you a runner yourself? Yeah. What are you training for? Uh, life. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Girls. <laughs> the real truth comes out. I, I think that's the real reason most guys run. They yeah. do, and a lot of women, too. Definitely. So how many miles a week? Uh, I don't know, like 10 maybe. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool. Not too much. You're probably, at 10, I think it's what? You're in the top 70% of runners or so? Yeah. I probably should get more out there. But Why? Get more out there. Get healthier, I guess. I don't know. I'm not too sure. <laughs> well, I mean, congratulations. Put me on the spot. It's a little. Ten miles a week is great. <laughs> Ten miles a week is awesome. Thanks. And I know Kirsty is out there killing it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. What are you training for now? Um, I don't have. I have a marathon potentially in two months. I just did an Ironman last weekend. Oh. So I'm kind of taking some time off right now. Recovery. To do an Ironman is spectacular. Mm -hmm. You are one half of one. Yeah. Tenth of I don't. Eight. I don't this know if we have the percentage statistics worked out for those mm -hmm. athletes. So yeah, it was well, cool. I saw a bear. I was up in Whistler, British Columbia. And they made us, um, it was actually really funny. So we're coming, it was mile 24.5 up the run after we've swam 2.4 miles and back to 112. And then 24 and a half miles in, the volunteer's like, you guys, there's a bear on the trail. Oh you have to get off the trail. So they made us clamber up these rocks, like up so uh, halfway up here. Get the damn bear off the trail. <laughs> and walk and then come back down. So it was pretty cool. It was oh, good. What was your time? It was 12-11, oh, so it was my, my slowest one yet, but it was the hardest, it was just very challenging because there's a lot of hills and elevation as well. And that was your um, second one, third one? Third. That's incredible. You want to do Iron Man over in uh, Hawaii? Maybe one day. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Tiffany, are you running? I am. How many miles? On a good week, five to eight a day. A day? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Around that be in the morning? I prefer to run in the morning. Yeah. Just you just get it done and get it over with. I have better energy in the morning too. Mm -hmm. Five days. Are you doing marathons or anything? No, just half. I'm currently going to prepare for the Las Vegas, the rock and roll. Oh. Half, and then I'm looking at doing the half into my killer, the diva run, and then for my 42nd birthday at full. Oh, we'll this see. Is new. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's tremendous. Your first marathon? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm nervous. Are you? Oh, yeah. How many? You've done a lot of half, so I mean. No, I've only done one, AFC. So Vegas is your next one? Mm hmm Well, that's why you're doing it, so you can have some fun, too. And it's nice and flat. Yes, it is. A little hot. <laughs> What's well, in the night, so isn't it a bit cooler? Oh, it is in the night. It starts, starts at 5, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was there last year when it went off. And it went, I was getting out of town before they <laughs> messed up the roads. <laughs> but it was going off. Congratulations. Thanks. First marathon. I've done one, so I know what that's up. I'll never do it, though. <laughs> All right, guys. Wow with the heart. How did it feel when I talked to you about your running and your stuff and congratulated you? Oh, great. You feel good. Did you feel, it feel proud. Good? You feel proud. And you wanted to tell me more. Each of you told me more, a little bit more than I even asked. You went on. I didn't get to everybody, sorry guys. <laughs> but you went on and you told me more. And you were proud of it. I could hear it in your voice. You were excited about it. And I was asking you additional questions. Like, is this your first marathon? You know, how many halves have you done? And I was pulling it out of you. And then you kept, then you just volunteered. And I congratulated you and each one. Wow, that's fantastic. That's a congratulations. How does it make you feel? Pretty good? Yeah. You know, look, I'm going to go backwards here a little bit. This is going to be a fun day, and you're all participating, believe me. Don't think you're not going to. <laughs> I've personally taken 50,000 calls over the internet, over the phone. I can't do that over the internet. And the way I did it is totally different than what I'm hearing on the phones today. Totally different. It has morphed. 
it has changed. It has moved from where we were when we started. And a lot of that's good. It has to. It should. There, there's reasons for it. Um, but I find in listening to the calls, and quite frankly, I had not been doing that. I had been focusing on retail and internet and getting those things done. And when I listened to the calls, I was taken aback. I was taken aback at how we had gotten away from some of the great things we did and added some new stuff that's good, but some of the great things that made the customer feel awesome and feel deeply proud and feel excited about doing business with us. And this is what I call wowing with the heart, guys. And that's what I just did with some of you. I wanted you to feel good about yourself and good about me and good that we're having this conversation. And in my judgment, in my judgment, we've moved away from that way too far. Way too far. So today is a discussion about how do we get back there. And the reason you're here is you are the movers and shakers on the sales floor. You and also also are going to give me tremendous feedback and we're going to do this together on how we can accomplish that. How we can wow from the heart, starting fresh and new. You're going to get on the phones, we're going to try things, we're going to see if they work, see what resonates with the customer, see what doesn't resonate with the customer. Come back and build a plan for the rest of the sales floor. Okay? So this isn't going to be me telling you that's how it's got to be. It's you guys saying, this worked really well, but this didn't work so well. If we changed it to this, it would work better. Are you ready for that challenge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, so I'm going to start in and, sh and tell you what I heard on the phones. Mostly, not listening. And I'm not talking about you individually, guys. This is generally speaking. Although some of you I did hear. Not listening and going way too fast. Way too fast. And not listening, we were doing more talking, much more talking, than listening. And we had our agenda, and we were going to go down that agenda regardless to what you've been trained to do in a lot of ways. And each and every call I listened to, each and every call, there was a moment the customer told the Fed expert something that they could have stopped and celebrated and been over the top with. And that's what we're going to work on today, too, is finding those moments. And it, it takes skill and listening skills and ready to stop everything. Go very slow, no matter how many people are waiting on the next call. And go very slow and celebrate that instance with them. And I'll give you two examples that I heard on the phone. One guy said, he was, he was doing some digging, and the guy goes, yeah, I need a, can you do anything without black shoes? The guy wanted black shoes. No, I need them at work because I'm standing at a press for eight hours a day on my feet. I ignored it. You're standing on your feet eight hours a day at a press? How many years have you been doing that? Oh my gosh, ten years? You're an Iron Man in your own right. How'd that make that guy feel? If he would have just stopped and done that. I'm not saying he didn't get the sale, guys. But I'm telling you that this person stopped told him a very intimate thing that he was very proud of and wanted some feedback. How many people stop you in a day and talk to you about your running or fitness and get excited with you and congratulate you and build you up? Oh, no. And this guy had that, wanted to be heard and we didn't hear him. Another one was buying shoes for his, her daughter. She's just starting cross country. Totally ignored. Not how old, not what school. First time, did you run cross country? How'd she get involved? Nothing. Just passed it by. A train passing in the night. Did they get the sale? I didn't even listen to the end. I don't know. Probably. 
have a high conversion rate. But boy, think of what could have been done if we slowed down and congratulated them. <sighs> yeah, feel good, doesn't it? Feels like there's opportunity. You don't listen to other people's calls, so maybe that's it. Well, some of you do. So um, today I've got four areas I want to go over, and I want to keep it tight to begin with. If we add other areas going further on, that's great. But I want to keep this tight. And you'll notice, with one minor exception, none of this has to do with selling. There's no selling involved here. I'm not going to sell anybody anything. But what I'm going to do is make them feel so good about themselves that this, they're calling in as a customer and we're over here as a company. And it's a buy-sell arrangement. And I want it to come together as a team, as a uh, partnership, as a trust, and go from that perspective. And that's personally, guys, how I handled every single call I took. Everyone. We used to have a, a counter up on the wall because we're four of us taking calls and then 10. But the counter was still there. And it would say 22, 22 people waiting. And I refused to let the team speed up. We had the deal. I'd rather have a great call and take care of that customer than the call, customer having to call back any day and having a bad experience. Oh my gosh. So I'll list out the four areas for you. Did you guys get anything? No, you don't. Get you would hand it in. First one is real easy. And I've heard that some people do a part of this. VIP recognition. Ah. And the best I've heard is simply, hey, if you're a VIP member, I'll make sure you get your benefits today. Okay, and look, I think you even said welcome back. I want this over the top, guys. I want this, oh, you're a VIP member. You've been there for four years. How many years? You can see it, can't you, on your screens? You've been here since, night, or if you can't do the math, since whatever year it is. That's fantastic. You're one of our best VIP family members, longevity, or whatever you want to say. Or if he's brand new, he came in a year ago, you're a rookie with us. We're so proud to have you in the family. And I'm going to make sure you get all your goodies today. Everything you need get as a VIP man. I want you to slow down and recognize. Right now it's going over the... So you get an opportunity to congratulate the person right off the bat. Because I've heard... I've heard now you guys are, are look, 75% of the people that you talk to are VIPs, according to Brian. Yeah, and you guys have probably backed that up. So 75% of the people, you get an opportunity to slow down right in that moment and go over the top with this guy. I don't want you to tell him how much he's bought. I want you to focus on the number of years. And you can, wow, you really care about your, your fitness. You've been a VIP. I mean, you can really take this in several directions. Okay? And what I'd like you to do is go back and we'll talk to customers this way and find the best way that resonated with them. Was it, oh, you've been, you must really care about your fitness. You've been a VIP member. Or you can try different angles, but I want you to slow down and try different angles with the customer to see what resonates most. And then stop and listen. He might say, yeah, I'm very proud to be a... Uh, and then stay with the VIP as long as he wants to. Okay. That's the key I'm hearing, guys, is we have an agenda and we just keep going and we cut him off short. If he says, starts waxing poetic about how he's a great, loves being a VIP member, stay with him. Stay with him, stay with him, stay with him. And you know this in the first how many seconds of the call? Five seconds. Five seconds. Because you guys are now entering the number, is that correct? <clears throat> Great. Because before you guys were entering the number, or many of you weren't, weren't, it was an inquisition about what's your number, what's your name, where's your account. It was, it was the worst ten questions I've ever heard in my life. 
So now that we have, if we can pop their account, this is key. This is key. Their account has to come up. Now, some people, you're not going to have their account. The number doesn't match, and you've got to go into your question. But I would guess, um, you tell me what percent you get through. Thomas? Yeah, 85, 90, 85, there. We got the phone number. Yeah. 85, 90, would you guess? Maybe a little bit lower. Okay. For me, a bit lower as well. Okay. Well, when you have that account and you pop it up, that's where you go immediately. And if you have to ask some questions about uh, what number it is, as soon as you get it, guys, you go to the VIP. We are going to get software. By what date? Um, by 1st uh, of October. By 1st of October, then we do it automatically. The account will pop for you. So you won't have to ask them impersonal. What's your telephone number? It's a very impersonal question. Extremely. And we can get that to 95, 100%. Wow. We'll be really excited. We'll never get to 100. It'll get to 90 or something. So we want to start on a personal basis versus an inquis inquisition. The moment you see he's a VIP, stop everything. The moment. Don't even confirm his address yet. We got something for that. Stay with the VIP. Okay? Does that sound reasonable? All right. If anything doesn't sound reasonable, you better speak up because you guys are the ones on the phone. I took 50,000 calls a long time ago. And customers change in processes. So I don't want to give you anything that's not going to work and you're going, that's a stupid idea. All right? But I'm giving you my best stuff from listening on the phone and hearing what I heard. So you tell you guys got to give me feedback. And when you try this, you got to come back and say, wow, that didn't or did work. And here's what the nuances around it. You have to listen to the customer. Second, You guys confirm, the floor confirms the address early on, correct? Is this the address we're shipping to? And I want you to stop at that moment when you get the address. Or as you're asking for the address, you guys can figure this out one way or the other. That doesn't work. And that and go to urgency. I'm going to give you a couple statistics. And we're going to have a quiz. We'll start with the quiz. Internet customers come, not on the phone, but on the internet. They come to the internet for the first time. They've never been to Rotary or Sports. How many visits does it take before they buy? Do you know the answer? No answer. So go around. How many? Um, I know the answer. Okay. 30. 30 visits? Third. Their third visit. Third visit. Five. 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 Two. Two. I think first. You get the first. First is right, guys. 70% buy on the first visit. They want their product. They know what they want. There's. They have urgency. And... The second, if they come back the second time, it goes like to 90%, but it happens the same day. It's not the next day, it's the same day. Wow. They want their product. 75% of the calls you're dealing with are internet calls. They have this, let's assume they have the same mindset. I want my product now. Okay? When do we tell them about warp speed? At the end, after they've ordered. There's no urgency. We tell them all the great benefit afterwards. We want to tell them right here, right when they, you get their address. Is this the address we're shipping to? Yes. Oh, well, if we get the order out by 2 o'clock, if we, if we can have this order in by 2 o'clock today, we ship warp speed. You'll have it in three business days at your door. And we even tell you what time it's coming. Who tells them what time it's coming? I want you to stop right here. I want you to stop right here. Take the time, slow down, and develop this urgency. Look, I want if if 
you have to assume they want it that day. That's what all the statistics are telling us. And these are internet callers, and I think it works for non-internet callers too, by the way. Why do you ask for catalog versus internet, by the way? Everybody was asking, are you calling from a catalog or internet? Pricing and discounts and promotions. Okay, good. Okay. So that's your point in time, this urgency, to drive if you order today, buy X. Brian, you got to get him a buy X. Latest yep. in the day you can get it. Okay? Because uh, you want to drive that customer to a conversion in the moment. And how many of the 100 calls you get are you going to push over by pushing that urgency and telling him you can get it out that day? Maybe two more, three more. But if everybody did that on a daily basis and our conversion went from what it is today 56%. to 60, it's a huge difference. And by the way, they're ordering from you, not on the internet. Which a lot of them just go back and order on the internet. I want them to order from you. When they order from you, they have a better experience than they do on the internet because they're dealing with humans. And when they do that, their lifetime value, which we track deeply, how many times they buy, how long they stay with this frequency, AOV, goes through the roof versus ordering on the internet. Because it's an innate product. We're trying to humanize it, but it's still hard to do. You are the humanizers. So when they buy from you, everything goes better for Roadrunner long term. Can I just yeah. speak up? Yeah, Every, speak up, here. everybody speak okay. up. Okay, <laughs> because I feel like... Um, so I did rolled this out a little bit after meeting with you. Um, yeah. Did some brainstorming about creating the sense of urgency yeah. with the team, and we created something around inventory. Yes, um, too. Now I just want to, and I know the group may be, you know, thinking the same thing, but um, we have a lot of items, Mike, that are dropship items. Yes. And so they do take seven to ten business days. Yes. To get there. So, I guess. I just want to hear your perspective on we're letting them know you're going to get your gear by X, but yeah. then later in the call, turns out that your, um, you know, Brooks um, or New Balance dropship item is not going to be there for, for 10 days. So that's some of the feedback that I will get from the team. Let me help you here. What okay. percentage of your orders do you think have a dropship item? I don't know the statistic. Ah. Anybody take a guess? 25%. 25? 25? 25? 20. 8. 8% mm -hmm. guys. We do a total of uh, about 15 million and we're about a $200 million company. It's about 8%. 7 and a half. That's it. That's it. Anytime I'm in the 85 to 90 range, I'll deal with the exception at the end. Okay? Okay? I don't, I don't you know, I can't be 100% on anything. If we were, Everybody would have a business the size of Rome. It would be easy. <laughs> this, this is a percentage basis, and if I'm in the 85 to 90% range, which I'm well in with this thing because it's only 8, I'll say, oh, gosh, we can't warp speed that because it's being shipped by a partner of ours. Here's the delivery time, etc. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any other better answer for you than that. Okay. And would, that would also be with, um, maybe if they're just ordering an apparel item, you know, if it's under a pound, and that takes that takes seven to ten business days because it's a smart post, so the same type of thing. What is smart post delivery time? I want to know. I think it's three to five is it three business days. days. If, you're not, if you're not saying three to five, then you need to. Yes. Yeah. I'm finding shipping is faster and faster, even the U.S. Post Office, guys. Even the U.S. Post Office. FedEx and UPS used to be. Yeah. To the point, too, about a dropship item, um, by the time you have that opportunity to share with them, oh my gosh, sorry, this is, is going to be shipping from our vendor, you've already got the order. You already have the order. <laughs> yeah. And they, can't, they don't want to go through the process of getting yeah. it anywhere else. And you set the expectations. I have no trouble you telling them it's going to take longer. 8% of the time, guys. I know it might feel like more, it's 8%. Yeah, it's just not letting them worry about it. You just got to deliver it to them in a calm manner. That yeah. If, like, if, if you just emphasize it at the end of the call, most of the customers don't really, they don't mind. Because I understand, I, I do it the same way. So I'll just 
I'll wait for it. I won't emphasize that it takes seven to ten days, but I'll wait for it and I'll let them get it. And the, they're usually very calm about it. If you mm -hmm. just kind of deliver it to them a little bit smoother, yeah. if you're like, oh, oh, it's going to take seven, and you're like mm -hmm. unconfident about it, they really pick up on that. If you just kind of do it smoothly, they go right over it. What's also helped for me is saying, um, we'll get this in the truck in two hours. People are like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So well, I'll that's where I want you to do this. I want you to slow down as urgency. Gosh, if we get it, if you place your order by 2 o'clock, we have warp speed. It goes on the truck whenever you order it in two hours, and you'll have three business days at 6 p.m. or whatever time we have. I want you to really push this, guys. I really want to know where this urgency comes from. We'll get to the inventory, because I think that's a, that's a secondary step. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what we're doing on the Internet now and try customer comes in, goes into the, puts an item in the shopping cart, and then wants to leave. I think we have like a 20% abandonment. A, a pop-up comes up and says, hey, there are only 22 Cayanos in size 10s left, but there's 75, I did, but there's 75 people looking at it. And so we're trying to drive that inventory urgency too. I don't want to talk about the inventory urgency right now. I've heard you guys, you do a good job if there's a, a shortage or there's only a few. I hear you guys do that pretty well, but I want this right up front, the urgency that we can get it out to you today. Because most people's expectation isn't that. Most people don't know we're going to do that. Most people have experienced in other companies, is, are they going to ship it the same day? I think only Amazon and I have that expectation. Anybody else have a different expectation? Zappos? Well, that's for Amazon. That is Amazon. Yeah. So let's try this up front. This is the, this can also be a wowing from the heart, guys, because you're telling them some excitement with passion. And go slow here. I want you to slow down and make them feel great about being with us and ordering from us that we're just so customer oriented and ready to serve you. I'm going to get this out. Third one is uh, this is where I talked, where, what I just did with you guys too, to congratulate and empathy. Congratulate and empathy. I even told you, oh, I've run a one marathon. I said, oh, I've run a couple of half marathons. I, every customer I listened to, every call had that moment in time where they asked, or they told you something. Whether you asked for it, a couple people asked for, asked for, well, why are you using this? Or what are you doing? Are you training? A couple did, but then they didn't drive that home with the empathy and the congratulations. And I need, this is the, this is one of the key, key points. Because first of all, we talked about VIP. Yeah, that's kind of personal. That's between both of us. Okay, urgency, even a little less personal. Now we're getting into it. This is about me as a customer. You're talking about me and what I'm passionate about and what I do. Oh my God. And this is the, the biggest crux I can tell you about how to develop that relationship more than anything else. And I want you to go so slow. I want you to pause, let them continue on. I want you to continually ask questions until you feel you have put him over the top or her. Until you feel that they are your best friends. Until you feel that they feel this is the most important call you're going to get all day. Because in listening to the calls, guys, this is the biggest thing I heard. We race through the process. We don't celebrate the customer. And I want you to stop and celebrate the customer here. And they're going, they all tell you something. And if you need to, hey, what are you training for? Oh, those are great kind What are you going to use them for? I, whatever it is, listen and then go super, super slow. And I will tell you, when I was asking you, did I seem sincere? Damn right I was. And I was. I'm interested. I'm an interested. I, I have interest in people. You all have interest in people. 
it's got to come from the heart and it's got to be passionate and it's got to be sincere. Praising with false, what's, what's that term? Uh, false praise is a word everybody sees right through it. You can't be false praise here. You have to slow down and be sincere and congratulate them at any level. My first marathon, my 30th marathon, I'm running five miles a week. I had trouble with you because you thought it was so bad. And I'm trying to build you up and tell you your running is good. No, 10 is good. Yeah, looking good is an important thing. We'll get you a psychologist. We have to, your self-esteem levels. But did you hear that? So you got to draw some people. You're going to have to draw some people out, guys. And when they're done, they're done. No, they'll let you know when they're done. Dean was done. <laughs> but it's easier over the phone. You have less anonymity, you have more anonymity and less personal right here. But you all did great, buddy. You wanted to share with me. And that's key, guys. That's key. So this is this is huge. And this is the congrats. Oh, I know how hard that is. Oh yeah, my two. I just, that was those two marathons I did. An Iron Man. Oh my gosh, I know how hard it is to get up in the morning and go for that five that three mile run. Whatever. Empathize. Do it sincerely. If you don't do it sincerely, it will come across that way and it will not work. And what's cool about this is it's Everything will be different with every customer. This is not some rote thing. This is kind of rote, this urgency, because you can bring that up. This sure isn't. And this you can play with, the VIP recognition. You do this 10 different ways. Now, I find, Mike, interesting that years ago, our customers would call in raving. They knew Roadrunner as a company that really gave personalized care, help. And you just don't hear those com comments from customers anymore. I totally agree. And I think part of it is because one, and by the way, you know, I said this is not about selling anything. It's everything about selling anything, everything. Because once you know this, and he's telling you about his life, he trusts you more. You found out he's running some marathons, but he hasn't bought any uh, singlet in a while or what have you, or he's running in a cotton t shirt. You're going to find out how to sell them. And it's the heart, it's the heart that you used to hear all the time. The sincerity, the, uh, just being present and really listening and caring yes. about what they say. And if there's one, this is the biggest thing we got away from. This is the biggest thing we got away from. In the old days, I never asked for the address and all that ahead of time. But I can, because I always did at the end. But the way... The system works and you got it, you got his name up, you're celebrating his VIP, then you can celebrate the urgency and move toward a sale, verifying the address. But man, I never missed a chance. I never, ever missed a chance. The only time I wouldn't do it, when a guy goes, I'm in a hurry, I need this, I'm going. And even then, I'd find some minor way to make him feel great about it. Hey John, you're on your way, I want you to know our shoes are going to be on the way. You need to move, we're moving with you. The speed of light here, warp speed. So you're going to have your shoes fast. Okay. Great connection, and we're still servicing the customer. And you hear some of those guys too. Does it sound like we can do this? This is hard work. This is slowing down. This is listening more than talking. And if I can tell them, that, that's what I kept hearing. We never listen. We just talk, talk, talk. Go down the checklist, boom out the door. So I want you to slow down. I want you to all take 100 calls in the next week. And I want you to come back and tell me how this worked. Did I ever mention, do I care about your numbers during that week? No, I don't. Okay. It, they happen. When you do these three things and the fourth I'm going to tell you about, your numbers will be great. I guarantee you. I absolutely guarantee you. Your call time is going to go up. Who cares? Customer's got his wallet out. Why do you want him off the phone in the first place? 
He's and they're ready to buy that day. Yep. Don't forget that they're ready to buy that day. I'm gonna go to the fourth one. Any questions on this? Do not pass this one up. This is the the, the cornerstone of walling with the heart. So is the last one too. That I didn't. That, that always makes me me personally. All this is personal, guys. When I have this, somebody does this to me, uh, that's how I feel. So I'm just trying to do the same thing. And this one is really always makes me feel great. I'm at a restaurant or something, and I'm going, oh, what should I have? Should I, and I'm asking the waitress, should I have the, the fish or the steak? Oh, get the fish. You'll love it. Do I think I ever ordered the steak? <laughs> Never. And what's my expectation about the fish? You're going to love it. Yes. And do I? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. It, it's, a, it's already pre-programmed. <laughs> yeah, that fish was really good. I'm glad I had the fish. It's so simple. And uh, I'm at the store, you know, I'm, and the guy goes, oh, the blue on you is better than on that shirt. Get the blue. You look great. I can't get the red one. We get the blue one. This guy's giving me a compliment. He said, that's awesome. Go, wow, yeah. It's called affirming the purchase. You can do this several times in a call. And it starts when they say, yeah, I'm interested in some Kayanos. Whoa. Those are the best selling shoes we got. They are hot. Okay, so you're telling them they're great product. You can do it um, after he, he's bought everything. God, you are going to love that shirt and uh, running shoes, those, those uh, Saucony Hurricanes. Everybody loves them. You'll love them too. I'm using the word love generously and often. Love. What is the strongest emotion in life? Money. <laughs> <laughs> you answered a little too quickly. <laughs> love, pain, money. money. <laughs> yeah, but love and fear are probably the two biggest ones. Yeah. Trust is a big one, too. And you see, because you bonded, because you wowed with the heart, because you had that connection, now when you tell them they'll love it, are they going to believe you? Yes. They trust you. Outside of love, trust is probably the biggest emotion. Fear might give that reference money. <laughs> but trust, when you trust somebody, how many times do you trust somebody in a day? How about trusting a stranger? How often do you do that? I trusted the waitress. I trusted the salesman. In, in a way that was significant, you know, it is. And you'll see that too. When somebody recommends something to you and you ask, wow, that affirmation of purchase. And telling them at the end, get out and run those as soon as they come. You're going to love them. You'll love how they feel on your feet. See how many times you can do it throughout the call? You can do it right when they mention the product. You can do it after the whole thing and you can do it several times in between. There are three ways to affirm a purchase for somebody. The three most effective ways, they've all been studied, and here they are. You probably have heard of these. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I wear them. I keep picking up, I like to do. I wear them. Or I have them. And I love them. That's personal, number one. You guys have all heard of this, haven't you? Okay. So the more times you can say this, this is the most powerful and most direct. I mean, when a waitress says, yeah, I tried to fish in the back tonight. Oh, it was awesome. That's even better. That's the most powerful one. Number two, um, my friends or people I'm working with, or family, or brother, or sister, 
somebody that's close to you, somebody close to you um, wears them and they love them and they love them is the second best way. Third best way, those are a best seller. All our customers are wearing. So anytime you can say, I, you win, close relative, friend, neighbor, anybody that has a personal interest with you that talked to you personally about a product, boom. I had the rep in here, he just swears by him. And you can think of 42 other ways to do this, guys. And then the final one is, oh, these are best sellers. Everybody's buying this. It's our best selling shoe. Our best selling tops. Roadrunner gear. And you can generalize it. You know, Asics is our best selling shoes if you wanted to. So you don't have to be real specific. There's a lot of play in this. But I'd love to hear it three different times in the call. And, and definitely at the end. Yeah. Definitely at the end. But he's got to feel good about it as he goes through that he's making the right decision. And I really think doing them as the product comes and then doing it generally at the end is the best way. And the way I did it. And the way I like it being done to me. Because the waitress comes back at the end of the meal, how'd you like that? You know they do. How do I feel? Here, here's an extra tip. <laughs> you bet. I have a closer. You're damn right. I, she gets a. It's not 15 percent. It goes 20 percent. You know. So, is any of the selling per se? No. It's not how to sell a second pair of socks. It's not how to sell two pair of shoes. It's none of the above. But when this is all done effectively. And consistently, all the other stuff is easy. That's all easy. I have about four more I'd like to do as we go, but I don't want to start there. It's, I think this is plenty, and this is the big stuff too, by the way, from my perspective. Now, does it change some of the things you how you sell? I don't know. You might find out, because you guys are the pros, you might find out, well, this changes everything how I sell. I no longer ask, are you here for shoes or something else? Or maybe I do still, and it still works. But I'm going to give you guys a lot of leeway on how you manage your calls over the next week to see how this works for you and what works for the customer. Because if it doesn't work for you, it ain't going to work on the sales forever. Now, do I know this works? Yes, I used to do it, but times change. <laughs> that was 30 years ago. Mike, I was just going to say, we do this a little bit in retail, and you can still welcome someone as a VIP and ask them like questions, like, are you shopping for shoes or something else? I'm not, this is not a retail situation. No, I know, but like those development questions, like at the beginning, once you celebrate VIP and do that recognition to kind of start to open the customer up. I, I don't have a problem with it, guys. I'm saying it might work perfect the way it is, or you might want to change it, and I'm open, okay? I, I like it, are you here for shoes or something else? Especially at retail, because everybody says, oh, can I help you, and what do you all say? No. No, no thanks, I just, <laughs> <laughs> and every, I mean, it, it just amazes me people do this. You'll find the best salespeople never will ask that question, they never will, and they get it, they understand why, and they're doing it with a purpose. And they'll come up to you and say, are you here for shoes or something else? Or they'll wait till you go over and pick something up. And they'll go, oh, doesn't that feel great? You always, you already like it or the color it would be good on you. Now you're talking to a purpose, working towards that. And making how the customer feel good. Good about their choice. You're affirming the choice right there. Speak. Well, I think that part of affirming the sell also is is the way you say it because you can affirm it, but if you have no sentiment behind it and you don't believe in what you're saying, the customer is not going to believe you. They have to believe. In you have what to be you're genuine. Saying. Genuine is the key. Be Sin genuine. genuine sincerity and passion. <clears throat> Guys, you hear passion in my voice when I talk about this stuff. 
But is it too much? Is it over the top? How would you feel if you got this on the phone? You know, when I see this, is, uh, this is just, to, in my perspective, this is just going back to basics, the way it used to be. I know. I know. It's pretty... Easy breezy there. It's just going back to the... Easy way. breezy. Michelle, is it easy breezy? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be because I try to connect with the customer and ask, ask them what they're doing and I'll let them celebrate. Good. Yeah. Well, I want you to do more. Mm -hmm. I want you to double down and triple down and quadruple down. I, I want you... I, if your phone... Do you guys all know how long your phone calls on average are individually? I want to... You, you should be taking at least another minute. You can t congratulate somebody a lot in a minute's time <laughs> and affirm their purchase and do things like that. <coughs> the idea. Two minutes, three minutes, I don't care. I've never cared about uh, time. I see it the same way, going back to basics, going back to the what we used to do, and acknowledging that it's now an internet call, acknowledging there's different things and different processes you have to follow too. But when we celebrate that customer and give them that over-the-top experience, and Tiffany and Tom, and you guys have been here a long time, and Christy, mm -hmm. they want to call back. They want to talk to people that make them feel great. And then think of all the people they're telling to call. You know, call and order for runner sports. They're going to make you feel great. I think Mike hit on that when he said that, you know, trusting a stranger because when, when our customers do call, they, they say, my friends told me, come to you guys because you'll, 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 you'll help us out. And, you know, they, they ask us, you know, what should I get? And that's, what, that's our key to go, okay, now they trust us. That's, you know, the doors are open. They're not, they're, you know, they're, we're not trying to get in there. You know, they're, they're already uh, coming to us and saying, yes. I need help. You know, yes. you know, my knees are hurting or, you know, my shoes are shot. And that's, you know, like you said, if you listen, they're going to tell you not, not only what to sell, but how to sell them. You bet they will. So. They'll, they'll walk you right down the path. Yeah. So. What do you think? I, mean, I already do most of this stuff. So. Like, I, I mean, I'm always emphasizing the amount of time that they can get the package in. That's one of the ways I always close a sell. I'm definitely emphasizing their what they're training for, if they're running, if they're training for something, I'm always making light of that and, and making sure that I'm, I listen to them and kind of bringing that back so that they build a rapport with me. A lot of times, like you said, most companies just, how can I help you, that kind of thing, it just lacks a lot of personal touch to it. So it's just finding, listening to the customer first of most and kind of having a good sense of where they're going. And if, the person's not very personable over the phone and maybe a very good, you know, you can still roll these out, but it, it, as long as you have an intuition of the sale or what they're saying to you, if you're listening, you're going to get that. Awesome. And now I want you to triple down. I, I want you to do even more. I want you to slow down, slow down, slow down, and triple down on the whole process in kind of the order we talked about. Recognizing the VIP and going to the urgency early on setting that expectation early on, congratulatory. And sometimes congratulatory might be the first thing and it chops up at you, don't pass it by. Grab that one. I'm training for a marathon, whoa, wow. Start there. Um, and then the affirmation, I want you guys to be over the top affirming this. Like you personally selected that for that person. So triple down on it. Tell me if you felt the difference from what you were doing to what you are going to be doing. Okay. Trisha, you gotta get on the phones too. Yeah, I will. I want you 100 calls. I want you this to be taught to the newbies ASAP. I think what's really important, kind of pulling out this too, is like the number one lesson in communication lesson is to feel like you're being listened to. And yes. We've like skipped a lot of that. Yes. It's wowing through the heart, guys. The heart is how you sell. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, Sean, we'll get to how you feel in a second. <laughs> but uh, I will tell you, who's the biggest winner here? 
Is the customer the biggest one? No, I don't think so. Honestly, guys, I, I, when I was on the phone, I felt great. I felt great that I made that person feel over the top. It was, made my day each and every time. My day was fuller, it had more purpose, it was richer. I believe I felt, and I got to do it, you know, a couple hundred times a day. Instead of having, that person only got it once, I got it a lot more. And it felt great, but I did it with sincerity and with passion, guys. Never did I not do it that way. It's just not in my personality to do it any other way, anyway. I wouldn't do that. Well, I think something else that, for me, this really resonates with me because I'm very passionate about running and yeah. our customers because they're inspiring as well. And, you know, why come to work and just go through the motions when you can have this time to connect yes. with someone and really yes. understand and also feel inspired? You know, someone tells you they're, they're running a marathon or, you know, maybe it's their first 5K. They just lost 100 pounds. You, you oh. feel good for them. And that, you know, then you bring that feeling, that warm and fuzzy, onto the next call, and it just compounds from there and continues on. Kirsty, that's exactly what happens. That is exactly what happens. One of the great changes that I think is going to help the team uh, is just removing that VPS part of the money line, because a lot of the feedback I'm getting from fit experts is they're like, hey, we're actually getting time to sit down, talk with the members, and get to know them a little bit. Yes. Uh, and that's always a great thing I've mentioned because once you get to that level where you're congratulating, you're empathizing with them, it's not one-on-one -on -one with them to get to know them. And so by then, you're not selling anymore. You're servicing our members yes. to equip them with the things that they need. Yes. The things that they're doing. Absolutely. So yeah, that's going to be awesome. And it's getting to know them with a purpose, yeah. but a sincere purpose. Correct. Is it going to work on video, chat? Yeah, absolutely. Everything carries over. How close are they to this today? Um, to the new steps? They're yeah. close. I wouldn't think so. Oh, well, I, I mean, there's always opportunity and change. Yeah. But we, we talked earlier, we rolled some of these ideas out with the VIP. I know. So I slowing know. down. Yeah. yeah. But, um, guys, my expectations are super off the charts high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This isn't moving in. 10%, it's moving at 40 and 50%. You have to channel your 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 E in your best score. Yeah. But it is, and it's, I mean, it's expected, it's easy. We're selling fun stuff. It's shoes, yeah. it's tire, it's things that get you moving. It's, it's motivating in itself. It is. And now, I told you I wouldn't mention names, but I've listened to several of your calls from the people right here, you guys. And I'm telling you, you got work to do. You got major work to do. It's not as good as you think it is, but what it could be is awesome. So I need everything to slow, 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 slow down. Hard to do for people. Do you think the rest of the team out there can get this process? Yep. Well, guys, look, we're not going to roll it out to them until we're, we're sure we get it. I'm not going to listen to any of your calls this week. Not doing that. And your calls are off limit. I'll listen to other ones. Uh, because I, we're a team here to get this thing right and to move it forward. Sean, you got to listen to some, I want you to take some phone calls. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. And also do this on video chat. Personally, do it on video chat. You bet. The thing about video chat, too, is oftentimes we can see what's in their cart. So if you started affirming what they're looking at already, you know. Oh, that's, you know, those are the nuances yeah. I know nothing about. I well, think that's see, fantastic. Yeah, so you see, like, what items they've been viewing. So you can say, hey, Mike, I see you've been checking out blah, blah, blah. You're on the right track. You're making some good choices here. What are you training for? Wow, Go from there. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone I can't see you. Right but, <laughs> Everyone. but no, because then you can use it to your advantage also. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. 
And Mike, you, you mentioned, and, and everyone I think agrees, that you know you feel great when you get off the phone with someone and you, you've had that connection. And, and you know how even better do you guys feel when you get a customer feedback? That they, they take the time to come back and call or email and say, wow, Michelle was just amazing. She changed my world. Can you imagine like every customer you talk to giving that type of feedback? Makes you feel great. Mm -hmm. I have to. I have to just input one little thing. You hit home on the people that are running and training, doing all these things. How often do they get someone to talk to you about that? And it's very few. Everyone that's training or running or doing something, you can you can relate to that. But when you call or you go someplace that's home to your hobby, and you have someone that can relate to you and talk to you about it, that's it's really emotional like you have an attachment to that company or that person you're talking to and s s buying is really an emotional thing so if you can make that attachment with your customer and um, and build that trust then the the selling and having them give you money so to speak is is easier but runners for the most part I think we're a selfish bunch so we like to talk about ourselves so all you have to do is ask questions I think all humans like to talk about themselves especially if they have an avid listener on the other yeah, side yeah. who's telling you how awesome you are mm -hmm. people just want to be recognized what your yeah. wife or boyfriend would do the husband wow. <laughs> you're awesome today Right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be okay. <laughs> You're what? Um, I want everybody to know this is going to be a minimum six month project. This thing is not going to go, this is not a one and done process. This is a drive it home, drive it home, drive it home. Uh, when you guys get really good at it and we all determine this is the way we want to go, your calls will be the cornerstone of the training that's going to go forward and the base that we expect everybody to be at. So, uh, you, you're it. Tag, you're <laughs> it. And we're going to do this as a team to make sure it works 100% of the time. Guys. So have a lot of fun doing this too. Go out there, have fun learn, write down your notes. We're going to meet next Tuesday, Monday. Let's do next Monday. What do you got on the schedule, Brian? Uh, next Friday. A week? Two weeks? <laughs> I don't do anything ten in two days. weeks. <laughs> All right. First time, 10 days. Is that too long? I think it is. No, that'll be next Friday. Friday. Yep. <laughs> so a week from Friday. Tuesday? Was it? That's our day off. I'm off on Fridays. Are you? Who else is off on Fridays? Yep. All right, that's going to happen once in a while, guys. Make sure you get your notes, get them to somebody here, and talk to them about your experiences, whether it's Brian, maybe, and, and so you have a voice at the table. When you're off, you're off. We're going to meet anyway. Uh, but I prefer, Brian, every seven days. Okay. One week, one week, one week increments, and let's just keep this thing moving and flying. Just these four things. Just the four. Um, and let's see what happens. David? Yes, sir. You can sit and watch the beginning of this. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> okay. By the way, I apologize for being a little bit late. Uh, my high school kids coaching football. Uh, working with the freshmen is a nightmare. But it's You're the coach at a high school football? Yes, sir. Freshman? Freshman. And then, wow. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Four years. This is my fourth year coaching Fourth football. year. Yeah. Are they winning? It, it, the preseason is just starting, so we're hoping that I, I can't even get them to find their helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, guys, I gotta go, but coach, I don't know where my helmet's at. I'm like, oh my god. So I apologize for being late. Well, congratulations on that. And David, I just did to you what I want you to do on the phones. Perfect. And I did that with people as they came in. Awesome. Did it feel good that I congratulated you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got like, interest. Ah, you know, thanks. thanks and you told me about your life. Yeah. <laughs> that was. You know, I, was I like that. <laughs> hey, listen, this is Jacob Weisberg 101 stuff, honestly. Yeah. And uh, for 30 years, he's taught me everything I know about selling. Everything. And it, all of it is is an emotional sale. It's a, it's a human sale, it's a behavioral sale. But it fits my personality perfectly to do this. It fits it to a T. Yeah. I know it fits your guys too. 
and what Mike did is it just it was so natural. Yeah. It was not a process of I have to ask this question. What race are you training for? And it was all in his tone. It was all in his presentation. And you're like, yeah. And the, the kids wouldn't let me go. <laughs> you know, that's the right. connection. That's right. the connection. Let's do it. I will see you next Friday, group. Yes, and you're going to be doing all the talking. Then. I want feedback, feedback, feedback. Good. Thank you. Great, thanks. Thank you. God, I haven't taught a sales class in a long time. <laughs> That's not a sales class. Not it's sales, a, though. It's not sales. Not it's sales. Wowing with the heart. Yeah. Opens the door to sales. Let me know when that's available.